Well, praise the Lord, and thank you for tuning in to Word of Deliverance and Deeper Studies. My name is Melanie Bitamo, and today we have a wonderful message. But before we get into the message, I'll let her, Michelle Patton, introduce herself. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. And, you know, to start out with this message, we believe that it's important to have knowledge. You know, not only believe, oh, faith, and yes, I believe in healings, or some people don't believe in healings. But one thing that is important that we have knowledge of our Bible. We believe that biblical knowledge is an important asset to every, every born again believer. You know, how, you remember that one scripture that was talking about the lawyers had withheld the key of knowledge from the people? Yes. How, and let's talk about the lawyers, it's talking about the sect of Jews that was during the days of Jesus who was in the temple proclaiming themselves to be such holy people, keepers of the temple and stuff like that. But Jesus had got onto them because what, what they're doing is they're withholding the key of knowledge. They don't want people to know about the Holy Ghost. They don't want people to know about the truth. They don't want people to know about the true covenant that's in Jesus Christ. They don't want people to know about the power of satanic demonic mind control and sorcery and enchantments i know when we were raised we were told about enchantments as like a a little fairy tale land that's out there with the witches and her big old pot and boiling up stuff that's what we were taught what witches and magicians consisted of or somebody standing on stage doing magic tricks no there's there's that's the total i believe so to say opposite of what sorcery magic enchantments are many times you know these people that are working these magic spells and enchantments actually seem to be nice people they'll sit with you and proclaim to be your brother and they'll i'm sure they know some scriptures too i'm sure they do pretty good at quoting scriptures too but what happens is they use the scriptures in a deceitful malicious way you can even follow many scriptures throughout the new testament to see where jesus christ where Paul, where Peter, even Jude had told us to be aware of these false brethren that are creeping in the churches. It says they'll feast with you. They sure know how to shout too, probably. They can sure quote the word of God. But guess what they do? They destroy the Holy Spirit by communicating and fellowshipping with the wrong people. Michelle, where are we going to be today with this message? Yes. It's very dire need. Yes. the days in which we're living in Amen. the church world is corrupted for the most part mm -hmm. but yet people have no idea mm -hmm. they think they're in the right way they think they're mm -hmm. supporting a ministry that's of god but yet have no idea mm -hmm. who they're actually in association with right we're going to tell you um today about the blessings of abraham and the seed of abraham and how that they have twisted that up so much and had and they're lifting up a nation a people of Israel, an ethnic group who claim this so called to be holy instead of lifting up Jesus. They want to lift up man and not Jesus. And then they, and of course, they'll say, oh, well, no, that's God's holy people. I'm sorry. No, our scripture says other, otherwise. Mm -hmm. And our Bible, they have turned away from the Bible, from the truth, and they want to take genesis 12 3 and run with that and they want to say well genesis 12 3 genesis 12 3 i'm sorry but the bible says you have to back up the scriptures with two or more mm -hmm. not just one scripture and make a whole doctrine out of it amen you, they like to use this scripture but we use this scripture to prove the real seed of abraham amen and who the real blessings of abraham are on amen and yes there was there was in um romans 11 it talks about god had left the remnant of israel it talks about paul had talked about that how even in kings first kings 18 and 19 where um elijah was up in the mountain and he says lord i alone am left they have killed your prophets lord and i alone am left and God said, yet I have left a remnant, 7,000 people who have not b um, bowed down to Baal. Mm -hmm. So there is a remnant that is left. And there is a remnant that is going to worship Jesus Christ. And that is in covenant 
with Jesus Christ. And they're not out there worshiping the Talmud. They're not out there worshiping themselves, but they're lifting up Jesus Christ. And that and Jesus Christ is their God. Uh-huh. And it talks about in Roman or Genesis chapter 12, we'll start there mm-hmm. since that's the scripture they like to use. He, they, it says that, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, in Galatians chapter 3, before we go to Romans, Paul speaks about this. He tells them how this is where God was preaching to Abraham how he was going to bless the nations, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And he even said it here in Galatians chapter 3. I'll get the verse for you. It says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. He preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. That's that same verse, Genesis twelve three. It says, So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Wait a minute. I thought, you know, they say that it's giving money to Israel. You know how they say, you know, the Egyptians came against God's people and God overthrew them. They like to use that. And, oh, yes, all the, all the people that came against Israel, God overthrew them. Guess what? God had overthrew Israel, too. Mm-hmm. Didn't he? They don't like to bring that out, mm-hmm. do, don't they? They don't like to bring how God overthrew Israel and how he used the Assyrians to overthrow the ten tribes and scattered them abroad. And then he took Judah and used Babylon and came in and burnt the temple down and destroyed everything. They don't like to say that. Mm-hmm. How they he, God himself destroyed Israel and Judah. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know how you mentioned that scripture in Galatians chapter 3 mm-hmm. about Abraham and how we ourselves through Christ by faith can obtain these promises and these blessings. That's through Christ Jesus, mm-hmm. right? I like it because it goes with Romans chapter 4 and talks about how Abraham had received the promises even yet before circumcision. Mm -hmm. How some people want to believe, oh, you got to get circumcised or get in covenant. Well, guess what? God gives us a great example here in Romans chapter 4 to see how Abraham was in, so to say, um, he received the promises even before yet he was circumcised. I'll read it. Romans chapter 4 talks about how God had preached unto Abraham. Um, What saith? I'm in verse 2. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So now let's hop down to verse 11 and 12. It says, He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised do we want to read a little bit more Mm -hmm. let's read verse 13 for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith let's read verse 14 for if they which are of the law be heirs what happens to faith it's made void yes it's made void and the promise is none effect because the law worketh wrath okay Let's go to verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by what? Grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Okay. Now, remember when Michelle read that scripture in Galatians chapter Mm 3? Who is the seed? Those that are in Jesus Christ. Those were the promises made, right? Yes. It says in Galatians 3.16, I read it again. 
Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Amen. Now, where do we go from here? I know we started out with mentioning Genesis chapter 12, how a lot of people use this in support of Israel, but we've proved with scriptures to show you who the Israel is. Mm -hmm. I like to prove with one more scriptures, according to first Peter chapter two, at showing you that when we are in Christ Jesus, who we become. According to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Ye also, as lively stones, okay, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So it's no longer about a physical tabernacle, right? Mm -hmm. It's no longer about a physical, so to say, sanctuary. Yes, we go to church, but what I'm trying to say is, so to say, we are supposed to be the temple of God. So they can make their fleshly temp tabernacle, or temple, whatever you want to call it, all they want to. The end of the day is we are supposed to be the temple of God. Okay, let me finish in 1 Peter chapter 2 because I said I can get ahead of myself and start reading some more scriptures stating that we are the temple of God. We are supposed to be holy, okay? 1 Peter 2, I'll read the end of it. I like verse 9. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. So wait, this is no longer talking about the fleshly Israel that's a holy nation. It's talking about who? Those are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Those who have the blood sprinkled upon them. Those who are in the, in the family of Christ. Those are who become the holy nation. How do we get this any more plainer, as plain as our Bible is stating it? Amen. And even Galatians 6.16 6, talks about there is an Israel of God. Mm -hmm. And that is not the Israel of God. We, of course, we've always stated that those that are in Christ Jesus are the true Israel of God. And yes, they like to use in Rom Romans 11, they try to say, oh, yes, God is going to save all Israel. And, you know, God's going to save all of them over there. No, God's going to save um, Israel from those people that's over there because mm -hmm. they're nothing but homosexuals and sodomy. Mm -hmm. If you look at there today, if you, you can even look it up on their own um um, Israel news mm -hmm. you can find that Jerusalem post how they're the number one homosexual um, country mm -hmm. and it talks about how God hath um, spared in Romans 11 it talks about how God hath had the remnant had who had not bowed the knees to Baal and he had left them 7,000 and it talks about even so then in verse 5 at this present time also at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace and if by great if it be by grace then it is no more of works otherwise grace is no more grace but it is of works then it is no more grace otherwise works is no more work so it says even in here it says in verse 7 what then Israel hath not obtained Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be a, made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. And let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. Mm -hmm. And it says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And you'll find that in Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. um, was it 32? 32. Yep. He says, I will provoke thee with the foolish nation. Mm -hmm. And then it says, now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, of them the riches of the Gentiles how much more their fool, fullness for I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am an apostle of the Gentiles I magnify mine office if by any means I may provoke 
to emulation them which are my flesh, which is those that were of the flesh of Israel, mm-hmm. and might save some of them. Mm-hmm. For if the casting of the of them, casting away of them, be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is holy is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches Mm -hmm. and if some of the branches are broken off and thou be a wild olive tree were grafted in among them with them that partakes of the root of the fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root Mm -hmm. but the root thee meaning what did jesus say i'm the vine Mm -hmm. and ye are the branches branches. Mm -hmm. so us as gentiles we don't boast that oh yes god's gonna throw them away and god's just going to not do anything with them no we're not saying that right we're not saying that god's not going to save a remnant of israel Mm -hmm. we're saying who the real israel of god is yes all israel will be saved all those that believe in jesus christ right it's not those that give money over there to a whole bunch of homosexuals Mm -hmm. And there is a remnant, a small remnant. Mm-hmm. The, all of them are not going to be saved. Even as Zechariah says, the two-thirds of Israel shall he cut off. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be only a third that he's going to save. Amen. And they're going to be put through the fire that they may be purged. Yes. And then it says, and then verse 19, that will say the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Mm-hmm. So these Jews or Israel, they're broken off that the Gentiles might be grafted in. Mm-hmm. He says, but we don't stand alone. It, it, he says, if thou standest by faith and be not high-minded, but fear. So us as Gentiles, if we stand in faith mm-hmm. with God, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, stay with the root, Jesus Christ, yep. and be not high-minded, but fear God Mm -hmm. we stay in the faith then we shall be of Israel Mm -hmm. it says for God if God spare not the natural branches take heed lest also he spare not thee he says behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severed thee goodness and if thou continue in goodness otherwise thou also shalt be cut off so if you don't stand in the faith stay rooted and grounded and established in Jesus Christ guess what you'll be rooted out of the olive tree Uh you'll be no longer an israelite amen and and if you see how you know god has worked this out even back in deuteronomy like she stated in chapter 32 you can find out how god even basically prophesied and told what was going to happen to these people because they became a stiff neck rebellious people it said that they were a very forward generation children and i'm in deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 20 it says children in whom is no faith and again if even if you follow the book of hebrews you could see in hebrews chapter 3 how it gives us an illustration about the children of israel how many of them there was a mixed multitude but may, many of them entered not in because of unbelief and what happened many of them were destroyed many of them you could follow what is it first corinthians chapter 10 that talks about how god has set them forth as an example unto us that we we need to take heed unto because not only did they perish and get destroyed because of their wicked ways because of their sins which reached heaven we also if we follow the like example in which they committed we also will receive so to say condemnation and like i stated in deuteronomy chapter 32 it tells you about how michelle read the scriptures in romans chapter 11 i like verse 21 because it says which michelle had stated they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not god they have provoked me to anger with their vanities and i will move them and i will move them to jealousy with those things which are not a people I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. This is again talking about the Gentiles. And it says, for a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. 
I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. Shall I stop there? I believe this kind of goes with Revelations chapter 6, how God's anger is going to be poured out upon these non-repentant people because of their worshiping of silver, gold, mm -hmm. other gods, mm -hmm. devils. They were sacrificing unto devils. And in return, God is prophesying right here where God is going to shake not only the heavens, but the earth also. And it's also mentioned in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 27, 28, how God is going to shake them. And he's going to try the earth, so to say, by fire. The fire is going to come. And when I say the fire, I'm talking about the fire of God. And when we talk about Israel, you can find them, like we've mentioned, in the book of Revelations. And also Isaiah mm -hmm. um, is mentioned quite often about Israel as a nation. How the sins in which they were committing, what they were doing, homosexuality. Um, and even how they control the trafficking in Ezekiel, it mentions them too. Ezekiel 16. And how they have the nature of Satan. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we cannot get away from Bible prophecy and how Israel is, so to say, the centerfold of Bible prophecy, so to say. Right. You read the book of Revelations, and it's basically not only talking about, yes, it's talking about judgment on the whole world, but specifically, it's also mentioning unto the rich men the chief men the captains and remember there was one scripture i believe it's in second peter judgment must begin at the house of god judgment is going to begin so to say at the house israel was supposed to be god's people they were supposed to represent god they were supposed to be the carriers of god's word they were supposed to be an example unto other nations but what happened they left the lord okay hebrews 3 12 tells you that is telling us to take heed lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God how God even states in this Hebrews chapter 3 and Hebrews chapter 4 how these people they didn't have any faith they departed from the living God and showing us what happens to us if we do not take heed unto what God says amen and also revelations when it talks about Romans 11 how all Israel shall be saved mm-hmm all that are in Christ Jesus, all who accept him as his Lord and Savior shall be saved. Amen. And yes, there shall be a deliverer. Jesus, when he comes back, that's when he brings back the, all those that have been scattered mm -hmm. abroad. And then shall he restore Israel. But he has to clean Israel up first because it's, it's a whole bunch of nonsense, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of sin in there. Amen. He has to clean it out. He has to get rid of all the sin and all the wicked people out of there first. Mm -hmm. And guess how he's going to do it? It says in Revelations chapter 17, verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Of course, we know the whore is Israel. If you look in Revelations, all through the, I mean, all through the book of the Old Testament, if you look up whore, whoredom, whoremongers, harlot, harlotry, it all re refers to 2181 in the Hebrew, which says, the Jewish uh, people as regarded as the spouse of Jehovah. So you can find it all throughout the book. You'll find it in Ezekiel 16. Mm -hmm. You'll find it all throughout Isaiah, Jeremiah. And then it talks about, and I'm going to finish this verse. And these shall hate the whore. These ten horns are the people that make up the great merchants mm -hmm. of the earth. Mm -hmm. It says, and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire for god himself god hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of god shall be fulfilled mm -hmm. and look at the one verse 18 it tells you who that woman is the woman which thou saw is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth mm -hmm. Ro uh, revelations 11 verse 8 it tells you who 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 and where that great city is it says in revelations chapter uh, 11 verse 8 it says in their dead bodies the two witnesses shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom and egypt where 
also our lord was crucified uh -huh. and where was jesus crucified outside the camp uh -huh. of I jerusalem yep and it says he calls him sodom and egypt mm -hmm. he sodom because there's nothing full of but sodomy mm -hmm. and egypt because it's bondage amen and so god is going to burn jerusalem mm -hmm. and israel and over there mm -hmm. why because of their sins mm -hmm. and he's going to purge it and then when he comes back, Jesus himself comes back and we come riding on the horses with him. Mm -hmm. Then shall he um, restore Israel to its great greatness. Mm -hmm. Even um, remember we studied the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. And remember how this is God's basically his determination upon Israel. It's already written. It's mm -hmm. already going to happen. Yes. Because this is the sins in which they committed and have not repented mm -hmm. um if you follow chapter two it tells us remember how we're stating how the just shall live by faith and if you don't have faith in getting in christ jesus and showing and proving how many even of the the books of the new testament were gotten or were obtained from even the old testament if you find um hebrews remember how it said the just shall live by faith mm -hmm. but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him mm -hmm. how many of the new testament so to say writers how how they got most of their writings or a lot of them from the old testament and showing how important the old testament is because it prophesies so to say of the things that shall even come to pass in the last days and if you read the book of habakkuk chapter two you can see how even verse four it says talking about israel okay it's saying behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just they shall live by faith it's talking about how they are the proud man they don't keep at home who enlargeth his, his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied so in other words they can't be satisfied if you look over in israel they i believe are like a hedonistic type of country who do all the sensual pleasure delight anything you can think of so to say you do it mm -hmm. whether if it's animals pedophilia um whatever it may be the unthinkable imaginable perverted type stuff is over so to say in israel they said tel aviv downtown they have a, a sculpture of a a, a female private part in the middle of their downtown area and around it is like adult um, images for people to look at I'm just giving it a quick example on how perverted they are but yet they're supposed to be God's holy people they have their gay parade which promotes homosexuality and it's important that we as Christians we open up our eyes to see who Israel actually is talk about the money talk about the trafficking of the merchandise it's all from israel so mm -hmm. to say and mm -hmm. if you follow them all the way to the book of revelations michelle stated revelations chapter 17 read revelations chapter 18 that tells you about the merchants of the earth have gotten rich through communicating and associating themselves with the whore yes. the whore is israel Amen. but many people don't have this type of knowledge because they have been brainwashed through the media the tv the propaganda of israel which controls major corporations yes. and tv books and so amen. on amen and i just want to say before we close that in no way are we boasting ourselves um over the israel or the jews or saying we're higher than them mm -mm. because we're not we can fall just like them we can get away if we do not believe in jesus christ amen. and we're saying is all who are not in jesus christ they will go to hell mm -hmm. i don't care who you are whether you're a jew greek you have to be in jesus christ we're not lifting up gentiles we're no. not lifting up ourselves we're giving glory to jesus christ our lord the son of the living god and we're lifting up jesus christ not israel not a fleshly israel mm -hmm. but we're lifting up god and his people amen we hope you enjoyed the program um, like we've given many scriptures and stated our beliefs and backed it up not only with one but two and three scriptures to prove our doctrine and belief which is of Jesus Christ. If you like to write us a letter please do. If you have any questions or bones to pick with us let us know so we can unite.